-hmm. Can you tell me what HRV is? Yeah, it's most simply the, the time interval between heartbeats. So your heart doesn't beat, um, kind of the same. It's, it's not a metronome. It's, it's, you know, there's very, um, it's, it's extremely variable from one beat to the next. And that measure of variability is an indicator of how, um, capable you are adapting to external stress. And it's, um, we, and heart rate variability is kind of the measure that we are able to use to help us understand your adaptive capacity. So your capacity to adapt to external stress. So while it's a function of the heart, it actually originates in the autonomic nervous system. And your autonomic nervous system has two branches, the parasympathetic and the sympathetic, and they're both competing to send signals to the heart. When you are highly recovered um, and kind of capable of responding to the demands of your environment, your heart is going to be receptive to both signals in, um, in, in a way that is um, responding to the demands in your environment. And you can imagine if your system is really under recovered, you'll be less capable of responding to those demands. So you can imagine this in reaction time. If I'm going into an ice hockey game and I'm really under recovered, I might not be able to, you know, see my peripheral vision is going to be narrower, right? So actually, um, when we're in an under recovered state and we have low heart rate variability, our actual, our vision narrows. So I might not be able to see an oncoming hit. Okay, that would be a, a really good example of like not being able to respond and react in an appropriate way to my or in an optimal way to my environment based on, you know, this based on, you know, how very, how my heart is responding to the demands of my autonomic nervous system. So the, the sympathetic is really this kind of uh, fight or flight. You know, you can imagine heart rate increasing. Um, parasympathetic is the rest and digest. It's, it's kind of the more relaxation. You can imagine your heart rate decreasing. So again, you want your heart to be responsive to kind of both inputs. And the more recovered you are, the more responsive your heart is going to be, and the more capable you are going to be responding to the demands in your environment in an optimal way. And is it fair to say that if you get the right amount of sleep, your HRV improves or gets back to your optimal state? Yeah. So heart rate variability um, and sleep are not uh, linearly correlated. So they, they're, you know, you can spend, um, you know, in eight hours in bed, which is maybe the sleep that you needed, but you might not see that reflected in your heart rate variability necessarily because heart rate variability, um, there's a lot of different things that impact it. So it's, it's not just about the duration of your sleep. It's actually more, um, correlated to the quality of your sleep. So, um, so there should be some sort of relationship between your restorative sleep. So the amount of time you're spending in these deeper stage of sleep and your heart rate variability. And indeed, we see that in the external literature. Um, that said, kind of back to, you know, daytime behaviors are going to also influence your resting heart rate variability. So your heart rate variability that's measured, you know, while you're at rest during sleep, um, that's when we calculate heart rate variability. Um, and, you know, things like the proximity of your final calorie to your meal time, you know, whether or not you drink alcohol, your how hydrated or underhydrated you are, um, probably the quality and you know content of your food is going to impact your heart rate variability to some degree. Um, the de degree to which you're going to bed at um, you know stable, um, how uh, stable your sleep wake time is is another huge huge mover in heart rate variability. Um, you know, did you really exceed your your kind of your strain or kind of the load that you're putting on your body exceed your capacity? Right. So did you really push the limits of, of kind of your resources for the day that could lead to a more suppressed recovery? So there are a lot of things that influence heart rate variability, um, but sleep is definitely at the very top. So if you are not spending enough time in bed and you're not getting quality of sleep, you can imagine you'll end up with a much lower heart rate variability relative to your baseline. My fiance, she's healthy and she works out, but she, her HRV is 135 and my HRV on a good day is 41 on a good day. And by the, by the time I've pushed myself for two weeks, it's like a 19 or 20, which scares the hell out of me. Why yeah. is there such a huge disparity? Yeah. I mean, there are, uh, you know, and, and that's what we tell folks like not to compare, you know, my HRV to someone else's because there are, um, a lot of individual differences with HRV. I mean, it's, it's your heart size, you know, I, I think one thing that folks maybe don't appreciate is like all of your behaviors before you actually ever had a, 
a, a measurable before you've actually even measured heart rate variability, a lot of your behaviors leading up to that moment when you get your first heart rate variability measurement or you become aware of it, those behaviors um, really matter. So yep. let's say you spent you know 15 years like you know drinking pretty heavily and then all of a sudden you know maybe you stop drinking. Um, or, or you don't, that is going to impact your kind of baseline heart rate variability. You can imagine it'll probably be lower than population averages for your age. Um, so, you know, I think that understanding that your body has a memory, right? What you've done to it leading up to that moment where you get your first heart rate variability um, measurement um, has an impact. And then um, how you manage, um, you know, kind of all the little laundry list of, of behaviors that I just outlined, the degree to which you manage those throughout the day um, is going to, you know, accumulate in a way that's going to either promote heart rate variability, um, your individual kind of heart rate variability, or, or kind of not. <laughs> so um, I think recognizing that um, there are you know, core needle movers um, mm -hmm. as it relates to heart rate variability that are worth paying attention to if, in fact, modifying your heart rate variability um, is of interest and improving your heart rate variability is of interest, which I would argue that a higher heart rate variability relative to your baseline is a good thing. It is going to promote a survival advantage. It is a competitive advantage, I think, because it allows you, to my earlier point, to respond and adapt to your environment in a more functional way and in a more appropriate way relative to demand. So, um, yeah, so I think there's a lot of reasons to pay attention to heart rate variability and there are, um, I think it's worth figuring out, okay, what are the behaviors that are kind of non-negotiable as it relates to setting a foundation that enables me to respond and adapt to my environment in the most functional way possible. Do you think it's an, a true statement that the, the mover of HRV for one person is very different to the next person? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, at the very top of the list, sleep for sure, right? We, we can't sidestep that. Um, you know, maybe at some point there'll be some sort of pill, but um, our, our body needs to be, you know, in physiologic sleep. Like that is really, mm -hmm. really important. And ideally we are sleeping during the biological night. So we you know a lot of folks, shift workers, they're awake, you know, during the night and sleeping during the day. And we know that that is not good for our system. And there's, you know, I can go into kind of circadian, the kind of the circadian basis for all of that. But, um, but there are certain behaviors that are uh, going to be really important that we um, do consistently um, and do as well as we can. And one of those certainly is sleep. Um, the other one, it sounds so simple, but that we know um, from our data absolutely influences heart rate variability is just your hydration levels. So yeah. um, ensuring that you're adequately hydrated. That, I mean, you can literally... You know, you can be underhydrated right in this moment. I can have, you know, a couple glasses of water and all of a sudden my heart rate variability will, you know, go back up by 20 points, right? Like, so heart rate variability is very, um, very sensitive to um, hydration. Um, and alcohol is another one that is going to move around your heart rate variability uh, substantially, which I'm sure you've probably experienced on the platform or maybe not. Mm -hmm.